I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number four. Scorpina is ready to make a move against the Rangers. Can they survive? Will their team maintain? Well, let's jump on in together, shall we, and take a closer look. Alrighty then, so as the comic opens, the evil Scorpina is pirating the Dragon Zord to cause all sorts of mayhem across Angel Grove. This is thanks to the green energy crystal that she's been filling over the last couple issues that more or less give her the same powers as the Green Ranger to pilot the Zord. Jason and the rest of the team morph, which means we get an absolutely lavish page where we get to see all of them in their costumes, but poor Tommy is told to stay behind as he is still something of a liability. Now this situation is going to call for Megazord power, and in in an interesting twist, Kyle Higgins chooses to do something they never did all that much in the show, and that is have the Zord pieces remain uncombined and fight the Dragon Zord separately. And I mean, from a tactical standpoint, this one actually makes sense. These smaller Zords actually do have some functions that never get used when it's just one big Mega Zord, like the Triceratops having some chains that can hold the Dragon Zord in place, the Pterodactyl Zord being able to strafe, the other one shooting lasers. Rita can't let this sort of aggression stand, so what does she do? she has Finster whip her up some shark monsters, which she not only creates and then sends to Earth, but makes them grow all in one go. Well, you know, this is one of those things that you always wondered in the show. Why didn't she just do that? Create like a hundred monsters, make them grow, and then, you know, steamroll all of Earth like this was Pacific Rim. The Rangers are getting their brightly colored spandex asses kicked out there, and Tommy can do nothing but watch. However, you know, getting to see his friends suffer like this does force him to finally confront his issues head on, and that is that the Rita that's been tormenting him all this time is really just a construct of his own shame. He's not going to sit by any longer and let this evil witch assassinate his character any longer, even though going out into the field means, you know, kind of going against what Jason, his supposed leader, was telling him to do, but it's a risk he's willing to take. And oh man, does the Green Ranger ever go full-on John McClane action hero. He attempts to use his flute to get the Dragon Zord under control, and when that doesn't work, he hops on Kimberly's Pterodactyl Zord and kicks in the freaking Dragon Zord wind to have a fist fight with Scorpina. He wins the fight, that's a given, but man, I do not want to know how much it's going to cost to replace a Zord window. So, the Rangers have won the day, and you would think this would be a chance for celebrating, only it's not. All the tensions and bad blood that have been boiling up over the last four or so issues finally come to one massive head, with everyone more or less screaming at each other. And all that anger and negativity in the room only ends up feeding the counterfeit green crystal, which, wouldn't you know it, this was actually Rita's plan all all along. Once the crystal has had all that it can take, it goes positively nuclear and blows up the command center, making this like, what, the fifth or sixth time this building has been destroyed now? And one of Rita's most strongest monsters is also waiting outside to finish off the Rangers as the comic ends. Oh no! Money Morphin Power Rangers issue number four is probably the most straightforward action-heavy issue this series has had to date, which is kind of funny when you think we're dealing with Power Rangers, which most people would consider to be nothing but punch, punch, shoot, shoot. Tommy's Arc reaches a really satisfying conclusion with him putting a lot of his shame to rest, something we never got to see in the show, but something he always figured had to have happened at some point. The comic looks great, as I've mentioned before, really evocative of the classic TV show, and Higgins does some really cool stuff with his staging for the fights. Overall, this one would get a very solid 8 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.